You can see this even better if you look at the fortunes of the bicycle, which was one of the most consequential inventions of the 19th century. Bike-like contraptions existed at the time of the French Revolution, but velocipedes turned into modern machines in the 1880s, and that's when they became tremendously popular. Early bicycles were expensive, so cycling was an upper-class and middle-class sport. But women could cycle as well as men, and the bike was a great emancipating agent for women because it freed them from chaperones, and especially because it began to free them from corsets and cumbersome skirts and put them in trousers for the first time. Early feminists, who were already interested in more rational dress for women, appreciated the bicycle and toasted it as a liberator. Then, as more people bought bikes, prices came down and more people could afford to buy bikes. Cyclotourism developed, cycling clubs, holidays on wheels. The growing number of cyclists on the roads led to demand for better road surfaces in the country as well as in town. Hotels and inns and roadside cafes developed or improved to cater to these new customers and a whole industry group. Manufacturers who wanted to show that their model was the best developed bicycle racing both in velodromes and in road races which drew tens of thousands of spectators. Cycle racing inspired some of the liveliest art of the 19th century, and it also provided, as soccer did in English-speaking countries, an avenue for social promotion. Champion racers were the first national and international sports stars. The cycle manufacturers were often people who had started out making umbrella spokes and corset stays and then converted to something more exciting using similar components. And the same spirit of enterprise inspired a lot of them to try to put engines between three or four wheels and to turn out first horseless carriages, which they called automobiles, things that move by themselves, and then the first airplanes. If you look at the wheels and the bodies of the first planes and cars, you will see that a lot of basic components were the same. And a number of cycle racers, like the Farman brothers, passed from racing bikes to racing cars to racing planes, moved by the same spirit as the men who made them, a love of speed, of adventure, of change, characteristic of the age. But the most important thing about the bicycle was that it represented the first mechanical contraption that could match the horse and which didn't eat hay or foul the streets or need a stable. The bike allowed men to go faster than a horse. It gave a lot of people a mobility and freedom that only very few enjoyed until then. By the eve of the First World War, miners, skilled workmen, baker boys could afford to buy their own bike and more could realistically dream of owning one eventually. That's the sort of revolution I like.